Hello everyone, this is Emraji Jal Islam from University of Texas at Arlington. Today I am going to discuss regarding the permeability test of soil. Permeability is a soil property that indicates the ease at which the water will flow through the soil. It is a measure of how easily a soil allows a water or any type of fluids to pass through it. The test results of permeability can be used into different sectors like to estimate the groundwater flow or to calculate the seepage through dams or to find out the rate of consolidation or during the lowering of groundwater table, upper pressure, etc. Permeability depends on different types of factors like the size of soil grains, the property of pore fluids, the void ratio of the soil, the shapes and arrangement of pores, and the degree of saturation. So the coefficient of permeability actually is a product of Darcy's law. If we see the Darcy's law Q equals to Kia. Here K is the coefficient of permeability. It often referred as hydraulic conductivity by hydrologists and environmental scientists. The unit of permeability is centimeter per second or meter per second or feet per second. So the velocity of flow is proportional to the hydraulic gradient and this proportional constant is referred to as the coefficient of permeability. The objective of this test is to determine the permeability of soil by any appropriate test methods. The permeability is a significant parameter for geotechnical purpose. Permeability is necessary for calculating seepage through dams or the rate of settlement of clay soil. Let's say, as an example, if we construct a landfill cover, that landfill cover has to be made with low permeable soil, which will restrict the rainwater to pass through the top cover. So. In that case, the permeability is a very important factor and it plays a very important role while designing the landfill covers. So the values of permeability depends on the, mainly depends on the grain size. If we see for, for fine grain soil, the permeability will be less than 10 to the power minus 3 centimeter per second and whereas for the coarse sand, it will be more than 10 to the minus 3 centimeter per second. There are two types of permeability, horizontal permeability and vertical permeability depending on the direction of flow. If the fluid flows towards the gravity, it's called the vertical permeability and if it flows perpendicular to the gravity, it calls the horizontal permeability. There are different kinds of laboratory methods that are used to determine the permeability coefficient. Among them, the variable head method or the falling head method and the constant head method are the most popular one. The falling head method can be applied for soil with low tissues, that means for fine grain soil, whereas the constant head method can be applied for coarse grain soil. The constant head method is limited to disturbed grain granular soil containing not more than 10% passing the number 200 cf. So this table shows the typical values of soil permeability, permeability for different kinds of soil. If it's gravel then there will be more voids, there will be more pore space, that's why the degree of permeability will be very high. If it's clay, the particle size of the clay is very low, so the void and the pore space will be low as, as well. That's why the permeability will be very low for the clay soil, that means virtually impermeable. So the constant head method is used for more permeable soil that means if the permeability is more than 10 to the minus 4 centimeter per second the falling head method is mainly used for less permeable soil that means the permeability coefficient will be less than 10 to the minus 4 centimeter per second 
uh, this is the test apparatus that is needed for constant head permeability test in this video i will cover mainly on the constant head permeability test i will briefly show about the falling head permeability test so here is the methodology for the constant head permeability test at first we need to take some soil samples we need to uh, mix the soil sample with some amount of water to avoid the segregation of the soil samples then we will place the soils on the permeability cell for placing the soil we can place it into three or five layers with defined kinds of blows that will determine the density of the soil so the permeability is also dependent on the density of the soil if uh, for the same green size of the soil if the density is higher then the permeability will be lower and if the density is lower then the permeability of the soil of that soil will be higher so after placing the soil samples we will assemble the permeability cell and then we will connect the pipes to that cell and this is the head difference of the of that ex experiment so when we pour water above it it will get the soil sample saturated and it will pass through the bottom of the parameter so after the complete saturation of the soil samples we will open that valve and the water will pass through to that valve and we will measure the volume of that passed water during the whole process the upper level of that apparatus will be the same that means the water table will be the same that means the water head will be the same so this is the formula for determining the permeability coefficient for constant head test so in that case q is the volume of water so we are measuring the volume with a measuring cylinder l is the length of the soil sample a is the cross section of that soil specimen that means the cross section of the permeability t is the required time to collect that amount of soil and h is the constant head so from that experiment we know all the parameters on the right side if we put the results on the right side we can easily get the permeability at that temperature again we need to report the permeability at 20 degrees celsius hence we need to convert the permeability from t degrees celsius that means the room temperature into 20 degrees celsius so that's the constant head permeability test for the falling head permeability test the calculation is also quite similar just the equation is different so for that test the head now will vary and in that case we don't need to measure the outflow just we need to measure the time to get the head from h1 to h2 so we will get the time and we will know the head before time t and after time t that means h1 and h2 we know the a small a small a is the cross section of that stand pipe that means the upper pipe capital a is the cross section of the specimen that means the cross section of the permeometer h1 and h2 is the head difference and t is the time required to fall from h1 to h2 So here are some additional video tutorials that will help you to understand the test. So I hope that you will watch those tutorials and you will get a 
fine idea about this test. Thank you for very much. Hope to see you again. Bye.